Welcome back to another episode. This time around, we're going to be making mirror finish carbon fiber with nothing but simple hand tools you can find at your local hardware shop. Let's get it. All right, so welcome back to another episode. At the start of this, I explained how we're gonna make some mirror finish carbon using only hand tools at home. Now, I know that sounds a little bit far-fetched, but I'll just run you guys through quickly now what we are going to be using and that you can actually do this at home because you can, I believe in you. First things first, grab your brother's drug scales, put a Ziploc bag around it so you don't get it covered in epoxy and you're gonna want a small measuring cup. So for this project here, I used almost 400 grams of resin. So that's this resin here. This is the stuff I get from Trojan fiberglass. So the resin itself or epoxy, you should, use the right terms, it's epoxy, and hardener. So this is a slow hardener. Read the instructions on the mixing quantities. So a lot of them are to weight. So hence, Brothers Drug Scales. After that, we're going to use some gloves. Now, make sure you use um, chemical resistant gloves. Nothing worse than getting some acetone on your gloves, and then your gloves dissolve. They're no good if they're in a puddle on the ground. So you heard it here first the more you know. After that, we're going to use some chemical release agent. Now this stuff is more expensive than diamonds, I'm sure of it, but trust me, when you see it pop off the mirror, you'll know. It, this stuff's the good stuff. Some shears, I cover this in the video. You need this stuff to cut carbon, it's good tailoring shears. You probably can use mum's chicken scissors, just don't tell her, wash them up pretty good but the more hacked you cut the carbon, the worse off it's gonna be. After that, we've got our mirror from Bunnings, as you can see here. So that's just like a $40 mirror. It's choose your own adventure, how big or small you wanna go. I recommend doing smaller pieces first, so you know, don't cash out all of your life savings, but equally, you do need to spend a little bit of money on supplies, so do what you want. Um, we've got our Find fiberglass roller, so that's just a basic all right, probably a $10 roller from Bunnings and a little foam roller. So we use this to apply our epoxy. That's it guys, it's not that hard. You can do this if I can, honestly, anyone can. All right, so this is going to be our release type of choice. So this is Chemtrend 75EZ or Chemlease for short. So it's a chemical release agent. We aren't going to be using any wax, any PVA, any of that junk on this week's episode. So I've tried all that in the past. It always fails. So you've got glass embedded in your carbon fiber and that's just <clears throat> So this stuff isn't cheap. Get your wallet out, don't be tight, buy it because you'll never look back. Every time I use it, I'm so thankful. And honestly, you don't use that much. So a drum like this is around $300, but I've used next to none and I reckon I've used it probably 10 times now so it's well worth the investment all we've got to do is brush it down wipe it off with a rag good to go so well I'll take you through that process right now we'll go through we'll do that and then it's time to get our carbon on ooh, ooh. we're gonna go on with our chem lease so honestly you don't have to be a rocket scientist to work this out hopefully you can see it I don't know what you can and can't see on camera, but I'll give you some B-roll if this is junk with my voice over the top. But all we're gonna do, spread this around the part, just where we're going to put our carbon. You don't need to do it everywhere. Some of them are gonna use like half the mirror. So I'm just gonna apply easy lease to half the mirror. So this was nice and clean. I wiped it all down before I started because the mirror finish is the surface that we're going to be molding to. If there's junk on it, trust me, it'll come out in the part. And you'll be kicking yourself that you didn't take the extra 10 minutes to wipe it down, have a bloody go, and end up with nice shiny carbon. So, we've got that all brushed down. Lovely. That's all we're gonna do. So we're just gonna buff it down lightly. Circular motion, ooh. If you're using a mirror, you can see yourself in the finish. Have a look. If it looks hazy, you need to buff more. So more buff, more buff horses. 
And then once it's all buffed down, we're right to go. So I'll skip through this. I'll show you guys some B-roll in the meantime. All right, so we've got all that buffed down. That's all good. We're all good to go. So no more haziness in the mirror. We might just do another coat here shortly, but I'll skip through that so you guys don't have to listen to me yammer on about crap and we'll start laying down our epoxy. All right, so we've wiped down our mold. Now it's time to mix our epoxy. So I use Trojan fiberglass or Trojan resin stuff. Um, it's up to you which kind of epoxy you go for. So there's slow, medium and fast um, hardener. I tend to use the slow stuff because I just leave it overnight anyway. And if you have a look on some of these drums, you'll see the directions for use. So it'll be to parts weight. So I've just got a handy scale, some digital coal scale, and I'll just put a Ziploc bag over it so the scale itself doesn't get gunky because it inevitably will. Chuck that on, zero it off. So this exact epoxy itself is five to one. So um, for every five parts of this, it takes one part of hardener. So for everyone playing along at home, um, that would be 10 mils to every 50 or, you know, whatever works for you. So we'll chuck our hardener in here in a moment, getting that exactly. Yep. Now it's up to you how much you want to use. Realistically, it should be one to one. So for every gram of mat we're going to put on the job, you can weigh this out one to one. It's not going to be. So we're going to go resin rich in this instance so we don't end up without enough and then we've got to go quickly mix some more. So I'd rather just leave a little bit in the pot, let it go off. And yeah, now I'll mix it up. So I don't know if you can see any cool little swirl patterns in there, probably not. So one of the things I'd like to mention is you really should use gloves, um, not for any chemical reasons, because you know, who needs to be safe? It's always safety third, but this stuff is super duper sticky. So it'll stick to you and water doesn't wash it off and it's just the worst time in the world. So wear gloves, trust me. So we're gonna mix that in. We're gonna mix it for a couple of minutes. Um, normally they direct you to mix it for like two minutes and then tip it into another tub, mix it again. Um, yeah, this isn't really an instructional video on how to do it right. This is how I do it. So I'm only gonna use the one tub because I don't feel like wrecking two tubs tonight. You can use this in like a, like a cup, like um, where you play like beer pong in. So you can do that too. I didn't have any, so I'm probably gonna ruin this drum. Sometimes you get lucky, you can pop them out, but equally I don't really like doing that because if a piece drops in your epoxy, you're then gonna put that on your freshly cleaned and you know, um, readied mold, and that's gonna wreck it. So now we've got that all mixed. There's a heap of air in it, but don't worry about it. We'll grab our fluffy roller. We're gonna roll it out on the job once it's all wet. And I'll show you guys how we do that. Then we'll be able to lay down our first bit of carbon. All right, so our resin's all mixed. Now all we've got is like a fluffy roller. So just gonna dunk that in a, into our tub and roll that out. So all we're gonna do is effectively paint the surface, just get a thin film all the way across where our carbon's gonna go. All this is doing is just wetting the surface out. We're not looking to make it perfect or anything. I'll explain a little bit more shortly, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use like a fiberglass roller, and we're actually gonna lay the carbon down and fiberglass roll the carbon itself. And we're gonna roll this layer back up through, ensuring the first layer is all wetted out. It's not too much to stress about. Don't, you know, don't um, get too daunted. This is honestly super easy. It's stuff you can do. If I can do it, you absolutely can. Probably 10 times better. Please post a video showing me all the things I did wrong and how you can do them better because I believe in you, the viewer at home. We're going to lay down our first mat. And now what's important here is to make sure you don't get anything. So you don't get anything on the back side. So say if this is our front, if we get an odd strand that comes around the front. So if there's a strand that lays on that, hopefully you can see it. 
um, that'll show up really, really badly. So we need to make sure that the face is nice and clean, no shit on it, no random strands, because this is what you're gonna see. Behind this, I say it doesn't really matter because it probably doesn't really matter, but we need to make sure the first layer is beautiful. So we're gonna lay that down. We're gonna try and get our little weave seam nice and straight. It is more difficult than you might think. So there is our first layer of carbon. Down. So here's our roller. This is just a simple fiberglass roller. It's nothing too fancy. And you simply go back and forth on the part and I'll show some B-roll here shortly. You can actually see like little droplets start to come up through the carbon fiber itself. So this is all we're gonna do to ensure that we get the carbon fiber saturated all the way through that main piece, right at the front. Because we all know it doesn't really matter if your carbon fiber skills are any good. If it looks like garbage, people won't wanna buy it. People won't say you're sick. You won't get mad followers on TikTok. You probably won't even get famous, honestly. So we're rolling, continue rolling all the way through, try not to miss any spots. If you do, you'll end up with dry patches. So the main thing to remember here is don't disturb the weave. So this exact pattern, you wanna keep as straight as possible. So if you now, if I was to drag my finger across it and put a big whoop de doo in the weave, that's the first layer you're gonna see. So you've gotta be careful. Um, my noise is, um, my roll is pretty noisy, so. You gotta just drag it gently. Don't butcher it, take your time. The epoxy's not gonna set because we used slow epoxy. Take your time. Make sure you go over every aspect of it without disturbing the weave. So that's the epoxy starting to come up through this sheet. So once we get the epoxy through, then we know this first layer is really saturated. So then we're gonna pour some more epoxy down on top or we'll roll some out. Then we'll start laying down our sheet. So we're gonna go, one, two, three, four. And then after that's done, we'll put down some peel ply, which I've got over there. The peel ply is optional, it is up to you. But anyway, skipping forward steps. Let's get down some more epoxy. Let's get down some more carbon. Repeat these steps. All right, so here's our piece of carbon here. Now we've rolled it all out. So you can see this strand here. Imagine if this is on the front. So if this is cast into your piece, absolutely wrecks it. So gotta be super careful not to get any strands and stuff on the front but it is all saturated. So you can see with the shine here, it's like all the way through this carbon piece. Um, so our face layer is completely saturated, nice and rolled out. So now we'll get our layers of carbon, chuck them on and repeat the steps. So all we're gonna do is lay an next sheet of carbon down, roll it, add more epoxy, make sure it's definitely saturated, then go to the next one. So it is a little bit heavier than if you were to do like a vacuum process, but you can do all this with hand tools from Bunnings. Got our four mat down, so that's four mats in total, all wetted out, so rolled, um, epoxied out, next layer of carbon goes down, and then we can do it all over again. So we've done that four times now, four. And all we're gonna do is I've got this, what's called peel ply. So it nearly looks like just a woven 
kind of like a silk. So what you do is lay that over the top of your carbon. You don't want to lay the roll in it for obvious reasons. Roll that out while, once again, not disturbing our weave. And all this does, it'll give us a nice matte finish on the back of our carbon. And I feel like it also helps to retain a little bit of a better balance in epoxy. So some people will tell you that it doesn't really absorb epoxy. Other people will tell you it does. So I don't know what side of the camp you're watching this from, but this is my side of the camp where we do things in the shed. So we've got that all down. We're trying not to disturb our weave too much. I did put a big wrinkle in that, but that's okay. Now we go again. So second layer down, a bit further down. So all we're gonna do is layer this down the piece. All right, and that's our peel ply all down. So it's actually kind of hard to see the peel ply in the end. So try and make sure that there's no white on top of your piece. The way I see it is if there's enough to saturate the peel ply, there's hopefully enough below that peel ply to keep everything nice and wet. All right guys, so that's gonna be the roundup of night number one. So we're gonna come back tomorrow. This video won't end before I show you guys the end result, how we demold it and how all that works. Hopefully the first half of the video wasn't too scary. So I'm gonna go for a little jump now. And then when I come back, it'll be tomorrow. Oh yeah, it's tomorrow. Do you guys wanna pull some carbon up? It, it's dry. Do you wanna see what's under there? So I do recommend you guys wear gloves and potentially eye protection or, you know, don't. Whatever. How good's that mold release though? Bam. Check that out. Woohoo! I love mirror finish carbon. Woo There's a couple of spots where you can see where it is dry, but we didn't get any weave stuck in it, so that's all good. Um, the dryness could have been avoided by maybe not rolling it as much, like lay down a thick coat, kind of let it tack off and then get into it. But I mean, honestly, you can't be too mad. Like, she's not too shabby. So we'll get this peel ply off, we'll wrap up this video. So there's two trains of thought with this. You can either cut the peel ply itself, like just a little bit. So once you create like a little tiny cut in it, you can peel it off. But seeing as though, unfortunately the camera audio died, so I'm just gonna voice over this one. All I'm doing is explaining that you can cut it up into snippets or you can do it in one big piece. So here I've cut it into a snip, pulled off a strip, and then I'm gonna do the rest in one big hit just to show you guys how you can do both. And now let's get onto the outro and get this video over and done with. So I did have a bit of a surprise at the end of this one. We were gonna take up the carbon to Logan Waterhouse and do a feature on his 120Y. Unfortunately, we're stuck at a random service station in the back of nowhere because the daily decided to let us down. So we're gonna be waiting on a tow. While we wait, hit that subscribe button. We're uh, just got over 100. And uh, tell your mum to subscribe. I know she's been watching. She loves mirror finished carbon. And we'll see you on a future episode, wherever that might be.